From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Project podcast. I am Brad Robinson. We're here today on episode number 104. And for my parents who listen, I'm getting real personal today. So I'm always personal, but I really want to open up about pornography. I want to open up about my addiction to pornography growing up. I mean, it started when I was 14 and it impacted more than 10 years of my life. So I want to talk about how pornography, especially nowadays, I mean, I can't imagine this generation growing up with the technology they have, having pornography available to them anytime they want. I mean, when I was growing up, I had a flip phone, so I couldn't use my phone to watch anything. And it was harder to access the these videos on the internet because the internet was slower. Um, a lot of sites were more uh, restrictive. But now, I mean, I think our society doesn't realize how harmful porn is. And I really want to tackle that in the in this podcast episode, I want to tackle the harmful effects of pornography and what it does to the brain. I want to talk about this in more detail. Now, what does this have to do with anxiety? Well, you know, pornography had a lot to do and has a lot to do with social anxiety. And A lot of shame and a lot of guilt come from pornography. But when I was going through my anxiety recovery, I had to come to the realization that I was doing a lot of things that were harming me, that were certain, they weren't serving me. And pornography was one of those things because when you start to awaken to the things that you're doing daily, the unconscious habits that you're doing daily, you're going to come to this realization that, oh man, you know, this might not be good for me. And pornography was this one thing that came to that real came to that light, right? I realized, oh man, I have to do something about this. And, you know, if, pornography isn't an addiction in your life, well, this podcast is going to be useful for you when it comes to any other addictions that you're struggling with. And the content in this podcast episode is going to be really valuable because pornography is so strong. It's so available and accessible. And it's not even those extreme pornographic websites. It's also those YouTube videos, those music videos that a lot of our current artists are producing that have strong sexual explicit material within them. And I want to talk about what that does to our brains. Um, And we have to also remember that our ancestors for the hundreds of thousands of years that we've been here, we didn't have access to millions and millions of pictures, endless amounts, unlimited amounts of pornographic material. So let's talk about what an addiction is. An addiction is clarified when you stop doing something and then soon resort back to it because you find it difficult to stop doing it. So you become dependent on this thing to feel good. And two years ago, I decided to quit porn because I knew that porn 
had a hold on me. I was a slave to it. At the age of 14, I, 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 you know, as any young boy would do, you go on the internet and then you discover these things that really stimulate the mind. And our brains are developing, especially growing up, where, you know, when we catch on to something that's really stimulating, it can grab us and hook us, right? And so it really hooked me. And I so I discovered this dark side of the internet. It was very stimulating. And this side, this dark side of the internet, it played on the strings of my primal brain. It was challenging to access porn back then, a little bit more challenging than today. And I I just, I, I'm repeating myself, but I just, it blows my mind to think about how it would be to grow up nowadays when you can just look at anything on your phone. It just, that just blows my mind. And I, I really found that porn was a negative hold that it had a negative hold on me when I discovered these no fappers on YouTube and no fap is no porn, no masturbation. And these people on YouTube are discovering that when you go without porn or masturbating, that there is this next level of mental clarity that really, it really changed their life. So it really got my attention because deep down I knew well, the porn, masturbating, it, it, this was something that was a problem in my life that I, I didn't want to really address, but these people on YouTube really brought that out of me. Now, I really want to talk about, because it's important to understand the neurochemical dopamine. And the dopamine is the reward circuitry. It creates this motivation and craving to pursue sex. Gary Wilson, who wrote um, Your Brain on Porn, which I highly recommend, he says that the evolutionary purpose of dopamine is to motivate you to do what serves your genes. The bigger the dopamine kick, the more you want or crave something. Dopamine tells you what to remember by helping to rewire your brain via new or strengthening existing nerve connections. Now, these dopamine kicks become more important to me than work or even school when I was watching porn. So these high dopamine blasts that I would get from pornography, they were so great that my the circuits in my brain were strengthening each time I would watch it. And they were so pleasurable that all other things were of lesser value to me. And so porn really had this grip over my life. And it has the grip over millions of people now in our society. And so porn, with its huge dopamine kicks, were basically saying, this is the most important thing in my life. Now, we all get these dopamine kicks when we do something that we're proud of. Like if you're working hard at your job, you get the dopamine kick, like you've accomplished something rewarding. Or when you do great in school, you get that dopamine kick. But porn, it creates this massive burst 
And then that massive burst is really telling your brain, telling you that this is the most rewarding thing. So the more you do that thing, the more it strengthens this rewarding circuit. And so that's why people have a hard time quitting. And most people don't even realize that porn is harmful because they're doing it so habitually that this whole act becomes unconscious. And dopamine loves, loves novelty. When it gets too familiar, it searches for something new. That's why people can look at porn for hours and hours. It's the buildup but it's also the search for new and better videos. And that's really, really interesting. So the longer I went on NoFap, the weaker the connections became. So it's a battle against yourself. Set the bar low because when you set the bar too high, it's just going to be way too, like you're going to, you're going to be like, how am I going to get to that level? Because a lot of these YouTubers who do no fab, and myself even, because on my YouTube channel, I do talk about how many days I go with uh, on no fab. So when you search these videos and and these people say, oh, I've gone a year on no fab, someone who's just starting out will be like, how am I going to get to a year? But it's really a battle against yourself and start off with one day without it because I talk to a lot of uh, people who 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 do it daily and they've been doing it for years and years and they've been gradually doing it more and more two times a day three times a day even when it, when, whenever they got the chance and then they become dependent on masturbating to feel good and to escape, right? Whenever they're feeling anxious, whenever they're feeling irritable, they go and do that to relax, right? But it's more damaging to us because in the long run, we're just going to be dependent on this action to, to make us feel good for the moment. And they discovered that orgasm, that blast, is equivalent to a heroin blast. That's just, that's crazy because when we do orgasm, we do get that hangover period. So if you're fapping daily, you're going to keep getting that hangover period, that irritability, but also your sensitivity your hypersensitivity to sexual cues is way uh, greater. So, uh, and then you, you like I said before, that dopamine is going to keep seeking out that novelty, and you want that something new that your partner w won't be able to satisfy you because of that dopamine uh, lowered sensitivity right? Your dopamine sensitivity is just going to keep lowering the more intense images and videos you look at. And so you are going to crave uh, bigger and, and badder dopamine blasts. And so your partner isn't going to satisfy you. And that's why um, porn is very damaging, especially to relationships. Now I want to read a passage from Norman Doidge's book, The Brain That Changes Itself, a really powerful book that I highly recommend. He talks about porn and how it is damaging to our brains. He says, Pornography is more exciting than satisfying because we have two separate pleasure systems in our brains one that has to do with exciting pleasure and one with satisfying pleasure. The exciting 
system relates to, to the appetitive pleasure that we get imagining something we desire, such as sex or a good meal. Its neurochemistry is largely dopamine related and it raises our tension level. Pornography, by offering an endless harem of sexual objects, hyperactivates the appetitive system. Porn viewers develop new maps in their brain based on the photos and videos they see. Because it is a use it or lose it brain, when we develop a map area, we long to keep it activated. Just as our muscles become impatient for exercise, if we've been sitting all day, so too do our senses hunger to be stimulated. Now, Norman also suggests that intense stimulation of porn hijacks and rewires brain real estate that would otherwise be devoted to making social ties more rewarding. So when I quit pornography, I found that uh, my social anxiety lessened significantly. Not only did I gain a lot more self-respect uh, for myself, but I started to open up to other people and other women and 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 talk to them without having that guilt or shame or or putting them on some sort of pedestal and there was a sense of not i already said self respect but being proud about quitting porn which which then extends to your self-confidence. So you gain a lot more self-confidence, but also you get that dopamine kick from that, that uh, reward of going a week without porn, going a month without porn, going a year without porn. You're going to get that dopamine kick, and that's what's really going to develop your self-respect. And so my relationship with Maggie also improved because of this. Uh, more oxytocin was released, uh, which becomes suppressed the more you watch porn. Oxytocin is the neurochemical, the bonding neurochemical that bonds us to other people in our lives, our close family, our relationships. And so that starts to release more and more. And so you start to bond with your partner and with other people. Really, really powerful. And the, the, the more time without porn, I was able to create and, and learn and be with myself. And so there's a Seinfeld episode where uh, George Costanza stops having sex and all of a sudden he he becomes this smart uh, intellectual sitting in the coffee shop reading textbooks and and it, it's it's amazing because it's so true right it's so comical but it's so true and there's one scene where Jerry's like George you know this is your brain obsessed with sex and he holds up a, a big piece of lettuce like that that big chunk of lettuce and and then he's he takes a piece off and and he's like this is the other part of your brain not obsessed with sex and it's just this tiny piece but there's so much truth to that because you know that big piece of lettuce really does represent the 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 strengthened circuit that someone who watches porn daily develops uh, day after day, right? It just becomes this strong. It just takes over someone's life. An addiction can really take over because that circuitry is massive, right? And so when George quits orgasming sex, 
what happens is that circuit just weakened itself. It broke, right? And so other things in his life just became so relevant. And a lot of his mind just opened up to, you know, what else he could do with that time away from sex, away from obsessing about sex. And that's really cool because I think that is extremely, that is true. And in the research and the literature on that is dead on, right? With 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 um with how our brain maps obsessing about pornography and sex really grow and take over. Really powerful. Now I do recommend uh, your brain on porn. I recommend the brain that changes itself. Really talks about how these circuits really develop. They grow. They take over, and we how we become a slave to these addictions. Right, we become a puppet to them. And I hope this podcast has provided you with a lot of value towards whether you're going through this addiction or another addiction, I hope this podcast has provided you with a lot of information. And if you know somebody struggling with an addiction, please share this podcast with them. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's podcast episode. Thank you for being here with me today. And remember... Do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next podcast episode. Bye for now. Brad's powerful anxiety recovery program is available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. Recovery starts now.